podcast crop rising to the top. Be sure to check out WrestleBiz, brother. The podcast presented by Funzy Neutron. Yeah, it's hip hop meets wrestling. Dig it? Powered by Belt That Online. Yeah, www.beltthatonline.com. They get funky like a monkey. Special guests like Tony Iron, Pineapple Pete, The Black Mask, and many more. I'm freaking out. Make sure you tune in. Otherwise, you'll be a jabroni and you'll miss the interviews, the predictions, the reviews, and just sitting a resound, shooting the breeze. Yep. Yeah. So tune in and let these guys tell you a thing or two about a thing or two. Need a little excitement? Check out the WrestleBiz podcast. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, Peace Family, we're back with another WrestleBiz podcast, Lockdown Edition with the big dog, Tiny Iron. And, um, you know, usually we, we're much more of a, a jovial mood. And it's kind of unfortunate circumstances we got to give, you know, rest in peace and condolences to um, Shad Gaspard, who recently passed away. So, um, Tiny, um, I wanted to ask you some questions about that because, you know, we were speaking earlier and you even hit me with some information that I didn't know that you had the opportunity to um, meet Shad when you had your WWE tryout, which we spoke about before. So, um, I don't know if you want to give a few words and stuff. Yeah, of course, man. Of course, man. So, uh, first thing, condolences to the family. You know, he had a young son and, and, you know, you know, very, very sad, sad circumstances, you know. But, um, yeah, I met I met Shad when um, I had my first trial for the WWE way back early, early 2000s. I mean, I didn't know who he was, but um, I know that out of everybody in that room, he came to me and spoke to me. You know, he gave me some advice. He told me about, you know, some moves that I should do as a big man because Shad is a big guy. He's about six foot seven. I and mean, I'm looking up to him. I have to look yeah, up to this yeah, guy. He's bigger than you, which is quite rare. He told yeah. us, oh, you, yep, you got to look up at somebody. <laughs> I had to look up. I was like, rah, okay, I thought I was big, but he, he was he was like another couple of inches bigger than me, man. I was like, rah, okay. But yeah, he gave me some advice. You know, he gave me like a mood set. You know, this is what big man does in the ring. He does this, he does this, he does, he does this. You know, if you do this well, tiny, you know, you make a good career out of it, you know. So you can see... I mean, he didn't have to come and speak to me, you know, but you can see that's in his nature. He must be a very, you know, very nice, warm-hearted guy, you know, and we kind of kept in touch on Twitter for a little bit after that still. So this was like many, many years ago, though. So I know that he moves on to acting and is trying different things out. But, yeah, so my experience when I had when I met him, he was a very, you know, nice guy, you know, came up to me and spoke to me, you know, wished me well, gave me advice. So... Very sad circumstances, Fonzie. I mean, definitely. And, and it's real that you even say that, that shown that you said that, you know, out of everybody, he took his time out to come and, you know, speak to you and give you advice, how to, he could see that you're breaking into the business. He could, you know, extend whatever advice that he could. And even in the output yeah. we've seen from, you know, we've seen the graphs, we've seen superstars from the high end to the bottom end all show respect and have shown love and say, you know, that, you know, he yeah. had a big heart and stuff like that. So, he definitely gonna be sadly missing stuff in the business. Um, you know, do you remember much of the crime time stuff? Because I I used to love the crime time man, when you know him and JTG. Oh yeah. They, 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 I think, to me, they were the next Harlem Heat man. They were, they, they were the next Harlem Heat, but more more uh, you know of today's time. You know, they had the whole gimmick. They had the current. They had the whole swagger. Yep, they had the current time down, man. You know, representing Brooklyn, representing you know just the whole hip hop sort of feel. I know a lot of people yeah. said that they felt it was, um, um, you what? know, say, like, you know, so. yeah, like, you know, what they call stereotypical at the same time, but at the same time, it wasn't. That's, you know, that's wrestling, man. That's that, wrestling. That, that we can't, we can't get everything. away from it. Exactly. That could be said about everything. And, you know, those brothers, man, they played the roles really well. You know, they got over with, yeah. all, they got over with all fans at the same time, you know, so, um, yeah, they were huge, man. When Crying Time came, I think it was. I don't think people were ready for them, but I think there was a head. You know, I don't head. think. If we look now, um, what are those new guys' name? Um, Dawkins and 
Yeah, see, they, they don't even come to my brain, you know, brother. I think the only, the only one that comes to my brain is New Day. But I think before New Day was crime time. That's the only one that kind of... They, 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 they slipped my mind right now. I know who they are. The, um, they, you know, they do their thing. Uh, Angelo Dawkins and the other guy, and he would be Uncle Bill and all that. Um, you mean the, um, the poet, not the poet, so we call them. Street Prophets, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, prophets. even that, the, how crazy is that, that the names even just evaded us and even um, that, you know, but we're still talking about crime time right now and, you know, we're still talking about some of the stuff they didn't did. I mean, I think they had Vince McMahon wearing a do-rag at some point, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they were, they were, they were, they were they stealing all people's um, girls and, and <laughs> stuff from the lockers and... <laughs> so, uh, I know on the WWE Network they're going to have a whole lot of um, you know memories to go back that people will be able to check out and stuff um, so it should if, be man what, I, I want to know a bit more about what you said you know when Shad gave you a bit of pointers in, in terms of how to maneuver in the matches was it something that you went on to implement in any your, your technique or form? yeah you know you know what for example, very raw at a time I had my trial like I didn't know nothing about how to wrestle. All I know is to watch it on TV, and all of a sudden, I'm flung into this this tryout ring, and I'm meant to I'm meant to know everything and how to do it. So one thing really in the beginning, I didn't know how people um, put matches together, like in their brain, in terms of how do you run matches to do this, this and that, and you know how do you how do you manage to put things together? I didn't really learn that in the beginning stage. I didn't really know how to put things together without someone telling me, you know, so I didn't understand that. I think that's the hardest bit with putting things together in sequence and um, making things work and, um, you know, making a match, match planning. So when he came and he told me, yeah, just go, you know, this is what a big man does, you know, this is the move set. Boom, you do this and you do that and you try, you know, make this happen and then from there, you hold on, you do this and you do that and you bang, boom, boom. You know, I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, he kind of gave you like a whole match. He, 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 put, he, put, you to game. he put you up on some game with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from there, I kind of realized, raw. Wow, this is what this is the kind of stuff I need to learn because these are the WWE guys. You know, these are the top. These are the creme creme de la creme of wrestling that I was I was there with. So, you know, but like I said, only he, only he's the one that came to speak to me. Wow. Everybody else was cutting. Yeah, everybody else was cutting the eye and 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 being mischievous and being you know. Being a hater, but at least he now everybody, Mr. Gaspar, he's the one that came and said, You know what? How you doing? Boom, 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 boom. You know, so that brother, man, that was that was definitely mighty good of him, man. And you know, peace with his family in these circumstances and you yeah. know, fans and friends at this time. Um, and yeah. you know, what you said was, was, was on point, man, because I think sometimes people don't realize. The big man style in wrestling is a different style to where, you know, to the little guys. And, you know, you've had even guys like Kevin Nash and, you know, certain people who have really been able to adapt the methodology to how they work as a big wrestler because you can't go out there and take the same kind of... I mean, nowadays you got some big guys taking ridiculous bumps, I think, for the size that they are. You know, yeah. um, it's, it's a unique style being being big as well as it was. And it's like, same with Shad. He was a beast man. And um, he went out yeah. there and represented him. He put it out there in the ring and stuff, you know. Most definitely, most definitely. I mean, being a big man, I mean, there's things you probably want to do that you're not allowed to do or you shouldn't you shouldn't be doing. So it's, it's very, um, you can't do everything because, like a big man, you can't go high flying because you're taking the shine away from the little guys who are going to do it. Because, okay. yeah. If the big guys are coming out the ring flying, high flying in the air, when the little guys do it, no one's gonna really care. Because that six foot nine, 30 stone man just did the same thing. So that'd be more impressive if the big guy did it. But you're taking away from what the small guys do. Yeah. I think every once in a while it's good for the big guys to be, you know, pull off certain moves and, and you know, maybe some Yes, what that's always good. Yeah, what yeah, so you gotta have like one at least one kind of Raw, I didn't expect that. Raw, that was, you know, one shocker. And that's it, not too much, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with so you. Thing that, yeah, these are the things that I could learn, but yeah. yeah it was, anyway, it was like advice, though, you know. So, you know, rest in peace, my man. But it was, you know, glad that I've met him, you know. And I know that he would have gone on to do more, great, greater things in the future. 
Yeah, but and he was doing some big things. He, you know, he was writing a graphic. He wrote a graphic novel partly and stuff. So um, and he was doing a lot of movie stuff and, and you know, most importantly, taking care of his family and stuff. So um, yeah, he out with his son at the time, which is a quite you know definitely a tragic circumstance, man. But um, oh, yeah, definitely, man. Twenty twenty, it's been such a year. I would say to somebody terrible. Else, so far, every month, every month, terrible. Terrible. Everything's happening this year. 2020, everything's happening. Yep. I don't know whether there was some prophecy. Was there some sort of prophecy like written somewhere that this is the year where, sh- where shit go wrong or something? Yeah, I don't well, know. Well, well, apparently it was um, not to you know, deviate too off topic, but some say the whole 2012 deal, which they had wrong with the whole Mayan deal, which, which calculates to this time now. So um, <laughs> it's to say this is the time. <laughs> right, man. Yeah. I know. Just mysterious shit. Things are happening, bro. Yeah. Well, everybody just, just stay safe, my man. Nah, definitely, man. Just, and yourself, man, I see you, you still look like you're hitting the training real hard, man. Bro, you know what? Because I'm on lockdown, bro, I'm just like, look, man. So it's like I'm living in my... It's like... Man, they're living in... You see this? I don't see you. This is like probably about, what, 15, I don't know, 20 kilo, I don't know, about probably 20, 20 kilograms. But well, you know how much it's worth now? It's the gold mine now. People <laughs> are, are hustling weights now because <laughs> the lockdown means there's yeah. no weights available to buy and everyone wants to do weights at home. And I've got the iron right here. This is worth, this is worth thousands right now. So that's, that's, the new, that's the new hustle. You're going to be slinging weights, slinging the iron, man. Like the <laughs> and slinging iron. <laughs> slinging it by the pound and the kilo, bro. I've got the weights here, bro. You know, bro, these weights have been here since I was... 12 years old, my brother. They've been with me ever since I was 12 years old. I've, I've, took, I've taken them with me everywhere I go, bro. Crazy. All my houses are big where I live. These weights have never left me, bro. Well, I mean, something that's it. They hold that certain amount of value. And especially, um, we know in your personal journey, when you even started training and that from young, you know, um, inspired by obviously yeah. Mr. T and, and, you know, a lot of the great bodybuilders and stuff. Um, so of course, of course. Of course it's gonna have that meaning to you. I can see you with the logo with the with the iron and all that too. So uh, you already know. Yeah, bro, man. I, I'm just um kind of um what is it? The, the body expo is cancelled this year. It must be cancelled this year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Is no, it the body building expo in Birmingham? Yeah, it's been shut down, man. Um, most public events now they down the Supreme Court. Yeah. Yeah, and I was I was looking to go as well, bro. I was looking to go down there as well, you know. <laughs> this year. But, body, body power, yeah, usually good. Yeah, body power, bro, there. We're going to come link you up, bro, find you, man. You know, have a good time there, bro. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to get something together after this. Um, You know, in the meantime, we just got to stay virtual. You know, we're all locked down right now. And, you know, same thing. We're still bringing the business. We're still bringing um, the exclusives. We're still letting people know what's up. And, you know, that's the best yeah. we can do, you know. And, and it's just like with the wrestling business, it's the same. It's It, it keeps people entertained and... um. Of course, of course, man. We got things going on, so um, you know, we still gotta play our part. But when this is all over, we are definitely gonna party and go wild, man. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, friendly, man. Definitely, 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 man. We got, we got to link up, brother. We got to do this properly, man. After the lockdown edition, we're gonna have the next show. We're gonna be doing the live broadcast, man. So we're gonna take it. We're gonna reverse it. Yeah, live, live, live and direct to see what really goes on live, live time. Yep. In the streets. In the streets, bro. You already know. Ooh, yeah. The cream of the podcast crop rising to the top. Be sure to check out WrestleBiz, brother. The podcast presented by Funzy Neutron. Yeah. It's hip hop meets wrestling, dig it? Powered by Belt That Online. Yeah, www.beltthatonline.com. They get funky like a monkey. Special guests like Tony Iron, Pineapple Pete, The Black Mask, and many more. I'm freaking out. Make sure you tune in, otherwise, you'll be a jabroni. And you'll miss the interviews, the predictions, the reviews, and just sitting a resound, shooting the breeze. Yep. So tune in and let these guys tell you a thing or two about a thing or two. Need a little excitement? 
check out the WrestleBiz Podcast. Ooh.